in the last stream, we were working on completing the Chapter Challenge 6 questline because in doing so, we unlocked the Nether Star Seeds, which we have since gone ahead and planted in our new Ultra Hopping Botany Pot. This Hopping Botany Pot is 10 times faster and produces 10 times more resources than the regular Hopping Botany Pot from the Botany Pots mod. And now that we're growing an infinite amount of nether star essence that means that going forward we should in theory be able to make an infinite number of these ultra hopping botany pots and therefore in doing so that's going to allow us to grow a ton of our resources incredibly quickly and incredibly efficiently and i think that is one of the things that i would like to work on in today's stream i want to set up a bunch more botany pots i want to get a bunch more seeds for a bunch of the resources that we're going to need going forward the first of course is inferium while we did set up this system in the last stream to gather a large amount of inferium very quickly i do think that going forward it's going to make more sense to get at least one maybe a few ultra hopping botany pots going have those grow a large amount of inferior essence for us and at that point going forward we can just uh, craft that inferior essence using the new master infusion crystal that we made up into you know tertium uh, prudentium superium insanium whatever it is we need because looking forward towards the end of the pack here it looks like we are going to need quite a large amount of that insanium essence the creative waste here is made by sifting creative organic matter and that creative organic matter does require creative essence the creative essence does require insanium essence so we are going to need quite a bit of that insanium essence in order to complete the pack so having that being worked on for us kind of passively in the background with at least one ultra hopping body pot is probably going to be quite useful and along the same lines here of kind of clearing up the base a bit, we obviously don't need this uh, portal anymore. I don't think that we need anything else from the Dimensional Dungeons mod, so we can go ahead and tear that down. And I think we'll also try and get rid of a couple of these uh, lines of machinery here. For example, this first one here that is sifting the poor organic matter only produces three resources for us. That's tin, that's copper, and that's coal. And so if we go ahead and craft up three more ultra hopping botany pots, and then if we go ahead and craft up a coal seed, a tin seed, and a copper seed, all of which I have a feeling are gonna be very easy for us to make, we can then basically automate the production of the three resources coming from this line of machinery in a much more compact way, and at the same time also clear out a large amount of the base. And of course we can do that kind of all the way down here. As we get to the end, it gets a little trickier. The uh, colorful organic matter produces quite a few items and so we would need quite a few seeds in order to fully uh, get rid of this. And then the same is true for the nether matter as well. It produces quite a lot of stuff that for now at least we might want to continue to produce via sifting. But I think we probably could kind of retire at least the first three sets of sieves here using mystical agriculture and the new ultra hopping botany pots. So that's kind of one of the things that I do want to work on in today's stream. The next thing, or I should say the first thing that I want to work on is this flint. You'll notice my inventory is full of flint. The reason for that is that we have still not transitioned away from using the simple storage network importers and exporters. And so currently a lot of our base is, is kind of clogged and kind of backlogged. And especially over here where we're sifting an unlimited amount of gravel, this barrel is now full. And so the excess flint that we're producing and the excess stones are just spewing out all over the ground. And so real quick, let's go ahead and uh, craft up a couple of importers and a couple of exporters. I think we have at least one exporter over here. We do indeed. And uh, as we go around, we can kind of get rid of any cables that we have. And as we find any importers or exporters, we can just replace those with importers or exporters from refined storage. Thankfully, both of those are super easy for us to make. The importers here are made with a regular cable, one destruction core and one improved processor. Between streams, I did go ahead and turn the remainder of our raw processors into actual processors. And so we should have quite a few of each tier. We do indeed fantastic. Uh, we are going to need a few more destruction and construction cores, which we do not have. And in fact, I did turn all of my raw basic processors into raw processors. And so we are going to have to make a few more raw basic processes to make the destruction and construction cores, but that is fine. The processor binding is not too difficult to make. And in fact, uh, we could probably look at teaching our system a few of these recipes. Now, again, if memory serves me right, I think basically everything here is done in the induction smelter. And so it might not be a terrible idea 
to kind of start looking as well at maybe moving these machines, which I've been saying I'll do for the longest time because they are currently in a, a rather haphazard position. But uh, I think we might look at moving those. And in doing so, we might also look at getting some more crafters down to allow us to, uh, to auto craft with those machines. So what I'm thinking we'll probably do is maybe move all of these drawers because these again are also haphazard and I'm fairly certain that I said they were temporary when I uh, initially placed them down. And then what I think I'll do is I'll move a couple of the things that we have over here and maybe move all of our thermal expansion machines down a bit to be closer to our emerald furnace. And then we can get a line of crafters and uh, potentially a line of importers on the tops and backs of those machines. Along the same lines here, again, I think it's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier if we just teach the system how to make stuff like the crafter here. So if we just encode this recipe up in our pattern grid, we can hopefully, by the end of today's stream, just request that, uh, that these crafters be made for us. And again, part of the idea here is that we are hopefully also going to teach our system how to make the machine frame as well. So we'll encode that, even though it doesn't quite know at the moment how to get any of that done. Uh, of course, as part of teaching the system how to make the machine frame, we need to teach it how to make Electrum, Electrum gears, and Electrum plates. So real quick, let us do the manual work of getting some more uh, silver and gold so we can make some more Electrum. This is another one of those situations where uh, we're actually very low on silver. And so we probably do want to look at making a silver seed before we run out of silver entirely. So for that, we need four silver, four tertium, and one prosperity base. That is fine. Currently we have two insanium spare, as well as one supremium. We can just craft that down into the tertium that we need. Once we have four tertium, we can go one, two, three, and four, along with the four silver, one, two, three, and four. As per usual, it's another seed base, this guy right here, kaboom. It's gonna instantly go because we do have this lever always set to on. And as soon as we have that, we are ready to grow more silver in the future should we need it. And we don't have to worry about using the last of our silver. And so now we can just go ahead and do something like this and like this and start to make as much Electrum as we like. We are of course also going to need our multi-servo press. We're gonna to wanna to make a second multi-servo press because we need one for making gears and one for making plates. That is also gonna be completely fine. We'll give that a little accelerate as well. And once we have a couple of Electrum gears, we'll pivot that over to making Electrum plates. And at that point, we, uh, we should kind of be good to go here. So let's head back. Let's get another multi-servo press which actually does not require a machine frame at all. I forgot how easy this recipe is. Fantastic, we'll take that and put it down right about here. So we'll have this one making gears and we'll have this one making plates. And then let's see if we can't get a couple of crafters on there. So if we're gonna make more crafters, first step is to uh, encode the actual recipe for the crafter, like so. We'll drop that in as well. And then let's see what we are missing. So if I wanted three crafters, we're just missing the uh, the destruction core, and even then it's just one destruction core. So that is actually fine. Let's take some of that process binding. Again, we can request that now, which is fantastic. We'll take that. And again, if we're gonna make more of the basic processor, we just need iron and redstone. Now, ideally, once we have the, uh, the crafters on here, we should be able to teach our system how to use the induction smelter and just make these automatically. But for the time being, let's grab at least two of those and then put them back in with, uh, was it redstone and nether quartz? It was, cool. Once we have those, we can drop them back into the system. As per usual, our wireless crafting grid is out of power. Let's get our Tinker's Workbench back down on the ground for now. There are many things I wanna work on today. I do at some point want to look at and see if we can't get into uh, Flux Network so we can potentially look at uh, beginning to charge our wireless crafting grid wirelessly. But uh, for the time being, let's try and tackle one problem at a time. Does our system know how to make a crafter? It does. Does our system know how to make three crafters? It does. Fantastic. So let's request all three of those. We will start with the basic crafters. We could, of course, look at upgrading them to iron, gold, diamond, etc. But for the time being, I think the regular ones here should do the trick. As per usual, they do need to face downwards. That's where our good friend the uh, wrench comes in. We can just rotate these to make them face down by right clicking. And then they are going to automatically connect to the system because they're connected to the gold crafter. So you don't have to individually connect every uh, block via a cable. They can like connect to each other just through um, osmosis, I guess. But uh, now we need three more 
imports to allow us to import from the back of the uh, the machines here. Now, that's not necessarily true. One thing we could do here if we wanted to uh, to cheese the system a little bit and also save on resources is we could take this importer and break it. And then if we were to get some item pipes, we could extract from the back of all of these machines into one centralized chest. We'll use one of our spare iron chests here. Let's put that down for now, right about there. And then we could put the importer on that. And so now what we'll do is we'll set the back of all of these machines to output and we'll set the top to input. We'll also switch auto output to enabled. So that's gonna push uh, all of the outputs once they're done. And of course, output is orange and input is blue. And so we'll make the top blue, the back orange, auto output on, the top blue, the back orange, auto output on. And so now I don't think we need to set the pipes to extract, but just to be safe, We'll do something like this, like this, like this, and like this. And now whenever something is requested, it will be made, it will be sent around into this chest, and then it will be imported. And so that works in effectively the same way as putting an importer on the back of all of these machines, but it requires us to only make one importer as opposed to four, which is pretty nice. So let's see if we can't teach our system how to make an Electrum gear. That should just be a case of shift-clicking the recipe in. Uh, here, I don't know why it's put 28 Electrum in, it only needs four set. And we also want to get rid of the gear working die because that is not something that it actually needs. You can shift left click to uh, get rid of an item from this grid. We can then encode. And now we've basically told the system that if you send four Electrum over to this machine, you will get back one Electrum gear. Let's go ahead and put that to the test. We will uh, take this gear out, click it, start, start. And let's have a look. We should see four Electrum in here. We do indeed. Once that is done, it should get extracted around into here and then pulled back around into the system. And boom, we have an extra Electrum gear. Nice. So now we just need to go through and teach it a ton of recipes. We need to teach it how to make Electrum plates. That one is fairly easy in code. We need to request some more patterns, which I do believe we taught our system how to make. We did indeed. Can we make like 20 of those? We can't. I'm fairly certain that we taught our system how to make glass, but for whatever reason, there's no pattern for glass in that crafter there. I'm not quite sure what happened with that one, but that is fine. Let's go ahead and teach it that sand equals glass. Now, of course, we do need a pattern to make that happen. So I'm gonna quickly delete the pattern for electron plates. You can shift right click with a pattern to clear it. Uh, so I'll put this back in like so. We'll drop that in over here. That should now be able to make glass. And then the other thing we're missing is quartz enriched iron. The quartz enriched iron is also made in the induction smelter. So again, we do want to teach that recipe that three iron and one nether quartz equals four quartz enriched iron. But before we can do that, we are going to have to actually manually make at least one more pattern here, which we can do. Fantastic. Let's do this encode. We'll place that in above our induction smelter. And so now I would assume that we should be able to make quite a few of these patterns. We can, we're just missing sand. Interesting. Okay, that's where we could take a slight pivot here because we did unlock in the last stream the material stoneworks factory this is normally a block that's craftable however ben has decided that in this pack it is not craftable but we did get it as a reward for completing the chapter challenge six quest line and it's a pretty nifty block that we'll go ahead and we'll place down right about here i think for the time being and it's going to allow us to produce sand very easily so we can put it down and the way it works is that you place lava and water into its internal tank. So water we have, let's just go ahead and right click that in like so. And then lava, we should have a fairly decent amount of over in our ender tank. We'll right click that in as well. And then by default, it's gonna produce cobblestone like so. So every time this finishes, uh, it uses 60 hours per tick. Every time this bar fills, it produces cobblestone, and then that cobblestone works its way through the four processes that we have at the bottom here. So there are a few different actions that you can set this to. There is smelting, which is what's happening right now. So cobblestone is being generated, it's being smelted, and then it's being smelted again, and then it would be smelted again if it was possible to, but you can't currently smelt smooth stone into anything. But uh, the actions available are smelting, crushing, crafting, crafting in a bigger way, <laughs> and nothing. So what we want to do here is we want to take the cobblestone hammer it into gravel, hammer it again into sand, and then set this to nothing. What that should do is that should produce cobble, should produce gravel, 
should produce sand, and then the sand will just stay there because we've told it not to do anything else with the sand after that point. From there on, what we can do is we can just set actually the back of this to extract, and uh, what we want to do in here, these machines work a little bit differently. Here, the sand is in the yellow slot, so we want to click on yellow, and then we want to set the back here to either push or enable. I think any of those will work, and then we just set this to extract. We do want to make sure, I guess, that the green is set to do nothing on the back, disabled, and the blue is also set to do nothing on the back. We don't want to accidentally pull any cobble or gravel out. We only want to pull sand, but if we do this, that should start extracting the sand and sending it around into the system. Pretty cool stuff. And so now we have basically an infinite sand generation system, which is nice. It's going to continue to produce sand. Right now, we don't, I think, have a draw for sand. We don't. So let's go ahead and put down some sand like that. And we should definitely make sure that we put a void upgrade into that drawer so that if we do ever fill the drawer with sand, we don't then end up filling our uh, disk drive with sand as well because we don't really need that much sand. And uh, once we have enough sand, we can go ahead and request the patterns that we just tried to craft. In the meantime, we can, of course, go ahead and steal some sand. Yeah, we got to put a stack of sand in uh, the pulverizer there, and that's going to get refilled instantly with even more sand and even more sand. So we do have a ton of sand that is being made, uh, but now we have a new way of making even more sand. For now, though, let's see. Can we get 32 more blank patterns? Start and start. We totally can. This guy is going to start making the quartz enriched iron. This guy is going to start making a ton of glass very quickly for us, which is very nice indeed. And of course, slowly but surely, we're going to get more patterns in the system. Uh, one thing you can do here, if we really wanted to, uh, to automate this fully, is we could get an exporter and place that exporter onto the pattern grid. So if we got rid of this cable here and just had an exporter going into the pattern grid, we could then export any new patterns that are made automatically into the pattern slot, this one right here, so that anytime we request new patterns, they're just automatically placed into the pattern grid ready for us to use. But again, before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and teach our system how to make all of the different kinds of processor, those being raw, improved, and advanced. We'll then teach it how to take all of the raw processes and process those into actual non-raw processes. And then we'll also go ahead and teach it how to make the construction and destruction calls as well. So all of these are gonna go in the induction smelter. We are running out of space in the induction smelter, um, but it looks like we have exactly the right amount of slots left. Oh, not quite, actually. I was going to say we have the right amount of slots left because we have the uh, the destruction and construction cores. So we could encode both of those and, and fill up the slots. But if we actually want this to work, we are, of course, also going to have to teach our system how to make Electrum, the actual alloy itself, like this. And that also requires a slot in the crafter here. So what we might have to do then is potentially look at upgrading this crafter here to, at the very least, an iron crafter, which is super easy to do. It's four iron, uh, one crafter, and one chest. So we'll place that down like so, rotate that down using the uh, the old wrencherino. And boom, now we have enough space for all of our recipes. Speaking of which, uh, I think that our system is kind of almost good to go. Let's have a look, we can test it. If we wanted to craft, let's say, a stack of crafters, what are we missing? We're missing Scylla, we're missing silicon, and we're missing electron plates. The electron plates we temporarily got rid of, but that's fine. Now that we have more patterns, we can re-add that pattern over to here. The silicon, of course, we have, but it's in essence form, and so we are gonna have to process that into actual silicon. And then the, the final thing that we were missing was silver, of course, and that's where the silver seeds come into play. Chat is telling me that my processes are set up incorrectly here. Oh, they are. I'm not quite sure why the system is doing that. Usually it, it doesn't. It, it just puts in the right number, but it looks like for whatever reason, uh, the system has decided to, uh, to put the wrong number in. Thankfully, you can just put a pattern in the output slot and that allows you to change it. Here, we want to change this to one, set, and then click create again. That will then change the uh, inputs required. We can do the same here. Click, set it to one, encode, and finally click, set it to one, re-encode. There we go. Thank you, chat. For having my uh, my back there. There we go. But uh, essentially now, the only things we're missing are resources that we need to grow 
and then process. So now that this is kind of taken care of, and now that going forward, whenever we need one, we can just request a machine frame be made. And for example, here, we could request, you know, 16 of them. And uh, if we had the silver, we would be able to click start and have them ready to go. But let's take a quick detour then and get these botany pots going. So if we're gonna make a bunch of ultra botany pots, we're going to need a lot more clay. Currently, our system does know how to make the elite hopping botany pots, but it doesn't know how to make the ultra hopping botany pots. Uh, for them, we can probably teach it this recipe right here where it takes the elite and crafts it with two blocks of diamonds and another star to make the ultra. We'll drop that in like so. And we could, if we wanted to, teach our system how to craft the essences here into the final item. So we could, for example, teach our system how to take the silicon and craft it like this to make actual silicon. But I don't think that's what we're going to do. Instead, I think what I'm going to do is use the crafters from RF Tools here to automatically craft all of the essences into their final product before they go into their own storage drawer. That way we can kind of take a little bit of the load off of the refined storage system and its crafting because otherwise, if we started to, to grow everything, if we had all of our copper, iron, tin, gold, redstone, diamonds, lapis, everything being grown in seed form, and then whenever we wanted something crafting, the refined storage system had to look at all of the seeds that we had, look at all the essences, craft them all at their item form, and then craft them into the thing that we actually want. While that would be fine and the system would be able to do it, it's a little bit more stress than is needed for the refined storage system, and it's just gonna be faster if we, uh, we do all the crafting before the refined storage system gets its hands on the items. So let's, real quick, take some of this uh, nether star essence and for now manually craft up a couple of nether stars. I think 28 is fine. I don't foresee us needing more than 28 ultra botany pots today. And so let's see if we wanted to make 28 ultra hopping botany pots. I think the thing we're going to be missing is clay. Yeah, in both brick and terracotta form. That should be kind of fine. Right now we do have no clay. And we also currently don't have, I think that much dust, although we do have a stack of dust ready to go there, which we can of course use. And I think that crystallizer will slowly but surely refill up with, um, with dust as well, which we could use should we need it. But uh, let's get some of this smelting into terracotta. And then let's uh, craft the rest down into clay and we'll smelt that into bricks. That's not quite gonna be enough for 28 ultra botany pots, but it's gonna be enough for us to get going. And so I think what we are probably gonna do is get another compact machine like we have here. And I think what we can probably do here is move all of our ultra hopping botany pots into a compact machine and then potentially using ender chests, which much like the uh, ender tanks have been made substantially easier to craft in this pack here, we can move all of the essences that we're growing in the ultra botany pots in the compact machine back to the overworld for crafting into their regular item form. So let's see then, if we wanted to make, I'll bookmark this because we are going to need it, but if we wanted to get another compact machine, I think we could probably go with the largest compact machine here, that being the maximum size, it's a 13 by 13 by 13 inside. It does require 26 compact machine wall and a block of netherite with the, uh, the standard rose gold ingot. So the machine wall, also easy enough, we just need more rose gold ingots. Let's go ahead and uh, I feel like we might as well just teach our system how to make the, uh, the rose gold ingots in the induction smelter. That's probably something we're gonna do a lot of going forward whenever we find a new resource that our system doesn't know how to make. We might as well just go ahead and teach it how to make it so that we don't have to do that manual crafting in the future. For example, right here, uh, netherite is currently being made with scrap and gold. We can encode that and uh, we might as well go ahead and encode the recipe for making a block as well. Drop those both in there and then we can just request that netherite block start and start and we don't have to do any of the crafting whatsoever, which is the dream. Now, uh, if we're gonna make that largest compact machine, I think it was 28. Never mind, 26 compact machine wall, which means we're gonna need uh, four lots of this, so 16 rose gold ingots. Start and start. And then of course, one more to actually finalize the craft, but we did already have three in the system, so that's gonna be fine. And yeah, I think that's basically everything that we're going to need. So we can take these and uh, we can start putting this together 
over in our field projector. I believe that it was something like this. I assume that the block of netherite goes in the center. And then once it's built, we throw the rose gold ingot at it. And boom, we have a compact maximum machine. Nice. So uh, we do not need these chests here. So we could probably look at getting rid of those sooner rather than later. Although, to be honest, it doesn't really matter where we put this compact machine. If we're going to be using ender chests to move all of the items out of them, we can kind of put this really wherever we like. And so, um, at least for the time being, and we can also move it, of course, in the future as well. For the time being, I'll place it like right here, just kind of out of the way. And uh, if we grab our personal shrinking device, we should be able to pop on through and see our new, uh, our new area. Cool. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all of these drawers here. And you don't actually need a draw beneath the hopping body pots, I don't think. I think you can extract out of them directly using an item pipe. So you can put the pot directly on an item pipe. And I think that's what we'll probably do. Real quick, let's grab... Do we have another 2 by 2 draw? We do. Let's grab that. Let's put that here. Let's request an ultra botany pot. And let's place that down here. The reason I'm putting that down here for the time being is that we desperately need some more silver. And so I'm going to put our silver seed in there just to get that going and to get us some silver, hopefully, fairly quickly. Fantastic. And we can use that for crafting. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I think the way that we're going to do this is by using the, uh, the crafters from... RF Utilities. These are super quick crafters that uh, you can actually use to craft multiple recipes, especially if you go for the higher tier crafters. So uh, the basic crafter is fairly easy to make. It's two crafting tables, two redstone torches, and one machine frame. Uh, but that machine frame has had its recipe tweaked. It requires a regular machine frame from Thermal Expansion with four dimensional shards. Thankfully, Isaac of the Past crafted a bunch of extra dimensional shards, so we have those ready to go. We can dump them into the system. Let's craft up a regular old machine frame. In fact, you know what? Let's teach our system how to craft the machine frame from RF Tools. And then I'm also going to teach it how to craft all three tiers of crafter here, because I have a feeling that we're going to need more than one tier three crafter, especially as we start adding more and more and more in the way of mystical agriculture seeds. Thankfully, upgrading from tier 1 to tier 2 and tier 2 to tier 3 is super easy. It's just two crafting tables and two redstone torches every single time. And so teaching all three of those recipes is not going to be a problem for us. Let's have a look. Can I request at least one tier 3 crafter? Start and start. I totally can. Cool. So this is done. If we were to put this down temporarily right here, just because we have power there, this has eight recipe slots. And so we're going to need one of these per eight seeds that we have. So right now we've got, what, five seeds here? One, two, three, four, five, five seeds. That's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to have all of the essences from all of these botany pots pumping into this one crafter. The way it works is we can take all of these essences, like this, and then in here we can assign each one of these recipe slots here to a different essence. So for example, the first one, we can double click on it, and then we can teach it that if it crafts three silicon essence like this, it will make silicon, and we can hit apply. Now, if I put silicon essence in here, it's gonna craft all of that silicon essence into silicon. Pretty cool stuff. We can then take the next slot, double click here. We can teach it that uh, I think it's this recipe here makes redstone, apply. Uh, we could teach it that this recipe here makes wither skeleton skulls. This one is probably not one that we're gonna automate, at least not unless we need a large amount of wither skeleton skulls. This one here, we can teach it to make silver, apply. Uh, this one here, we could teach it to make the first stage of nether star shards. And this is where the crafter really comes into its own because the crafter has a, f a couple of options that allow us to put these nether shards back into the input slot as opposed to sending them to the output slot here. So uh, right now you'll see that uh, this second option is set to EXT and it says results of crafting operation will go to output buffer. If we click that, we can change it to the results of, out uh, of crafting operation will stay in the input buffer. If we hit apply, now if we put some of these in, it will craft them, but place them back in the input buffer, which is exactly what we want, because then we can go to our next recipe, do something like this, hit apply again, and now the nether shards will get turned into nether stars. Super nifty. And so now if we were to put some silver in and some nether star essence in and some redstone essence in, it's going to craft all of that stuff 
into all of the outputs, and then we can just take all of those outputs, send them around to an ender chest, and then hook that ender chest up to our refined storage system, maybe have like an importer like this on that ender chest to pull all of those finished resources into the system and into their respective drawers. That is the plan. The only thing that we currently do not have to make that plan a reality is wireless power, because the, we could do this in a, a, a jankier way. We could have all of the essences come out of the compact machine and then have them crafted with crafters. But I feel like it makes more sense to just put the crafters inside of the compact machine and just have the final product come out of the compact machine. Now, if we want that to happen, we need a way of getting power into the compact machine. And whilst we could do that with tunnels, we could put an energy tunnel on the bottom of this and then run an energy pipe in there and then run a pipe from the inside of the compact machine over to wherever we end up putting the crafter. That's a very crude way of doing it, especially when we have access to such a powerful mod like Flux Networks. So as I mentioned before, Flux Networks is a super powerful mod, but a very simple mod that allows us to wirelessly move our redstone flux power around the base. The very basics of the system are the flux plug and the flux point. The flux plug receives energy from adjacent blocks, so you put the flux plug where your power is being generated. The flux point delivers energy to adjacent blocks, so you put this onto the machine that you want to receive power. They're both made in a fairly similar way. I'll bookmark both of them for the time being. The flux plug is made with four flux cores and one flux block. The flux block is made with more flux cores and some flux dust. The flux cores are made with flux dust, obsidian, and an eye of ender. And the flux dust is made in this pink by pulverizing dimensional shards. So it's really good that we made an excess of these. The flux point is made in a very similar way, but instead of requiring that flux block, it's just a block of redstone, making these a lot easier to make. So basically, uh, our first port of call here is gonna be to get a pulverizer because we actually do not have one. Again, this is another recipe that actually isn't going to be too difficult, I don't think. We just need another copper hammer, that's fine. We need some more glass of all things. Yeah, we can go ahead and request, you know, a stack of glass. Hit start on that, that's gonna come in nice and quickly. That should get us a, a flux hammer just as soon as that fourth bit of glass comes in. Fantastic. And then we need two bronze gears. Right now we actually don't have that much bronze, but as per usual, we can go ahead and teach our system how to combine the copper and tin to make bronze, encode, drop that above the old induction smelter. And while we're at it, I feel like we might as well go ahead, and this is not right at all. This makes, um, again, I don't know why it's pulled the amount of bronze that we have in our system and use that as the base for the recipe. I don't know if that's a bug or not, but this should be uh, four bronze encode but uh, we might as well whilst we're here also just teach our system how to make the uh, the bronze gear as well again for some reason it's decided to put six in there that's not correct but uh, it's thankfully a very easy thing to rectify drop you in and then uh, what we can do here is we can just uh, control click to request those two bronze gears be made and boom there is our pulverizer so we can get rid of this for now we don't need to keep this uh, crafter here we're going to move that of course through into the overworld. Instead, we can put down our pulverizer, and if we grab another crafter, we can uh, use that crafter and then teach our system, I guess, how to turn the dimensional shards into flux dust, which I think is going to be useful for us because I think we are going to want to teach our system how to make the flux points, and uh, that way in the future, should we want to add any new machines to our flux network, we can just request a flux point, place it down onto whatever machine needs power, and it will start getting power from our kind of main centralized power system, which is, is going to be ideal. So we'll take this. Uh, this one is going to require a cable because it's not going to be connected directly to the other crafters. And so even if we rotate it to point down, it's not going to go online until we do something like this, at which point we can, of course, teach our system how to make the flux dust encode. And we can place that in the back here, making sure to set the top as input, the back as output, also output to enabled, and of course, extract from the back. Nice. While we're at it, I feel like we might as well go ahead and teach our system how to make uh, the actual flux point and the actual flux plug. That is going to require the flux block and it's going to require the flux core. It's also going to require an eye of ender, which shouldn't be too difficult. I believe we might have some blaze powder. We do. We've got a ton of blaze powder. Fantastic. The only thing we don't have there and the only thing our system doesn't know how to make is obsidian, right? Yeah, we got four obsidian which is enough, I think, maybe to make the first flux plug. 
but it's definitely not enough to make the extra flux cores. Thankfully, again, that shouldn't be difficult for us at all. Now that we're making excess lava over in our compact machine, we can go back to placing water directly above this stone barrel here. Again, if we do something like this to keep the water in place, if we get rid of that and put the water down like this, uh, not like that, if we put the water down like this, what we should then be able to do is extract via an item pipe round into a storage drawer. I would like it to just be a regular old storage drawer. Like so. And just like we're doing with the clay over there, I think if we were to get the uh, highest tier of item pipe, we should be able to make a very large amount of obsidian very quickly. Yeah, look at that. That is going to start to rip through the lava that we're producing. And so temporarily, I'm going to turn this off just because I don't want to use all of our lava at least not until we upgrade our body pots in here from Elite to Ultra, at which point I think we'll be producing way more than enough lava, even if we run the Obsidian thing uh, full time. For now though, let's drop that in the system and let's see, can we craft a, uh, can we request a flux plug? We can, and start. We'll also do the same for a flux point, and start. Those might take a second because the pulverizer is not particularly fast. Of course, as per usual, we can give it a quick bump with the uh, time in a bottle to make it a little bit faster. And if we really wanted to, we could also move one of our integral components over to make it even faster still. But uh, once that's done, I think we might have our first flux plug we do and our first flux point. Nice. So as I mentioned before, these are the only two items required to actually get wireless power up and running. The idea is that we place one flux plug down over where our power is being generated. Right now it's the magmatic dynamo, and so if we were to place it down right about here, that's gonna connect, and all we have to do is create a new network. We'll call this one uh, Isaac's Power, smiley face. Uh, we'll set that to like a light blue, and we'll click Create. Um, it does require a password. It doesn't matter what password you put in, you don't really have to use it ever, so we can just put uh, anything in there and click Create. And now our power system is available in the list of people who are on the server. And so if we were to uh, click on that, this is now set to us. And so now if we were to take the flux point and place that down onto a different machine that needs power, for example, we have this crafter here. I don't know if these retain their power. They do, which is a little awkward. Let me uh, quickly try and burn some of that power by putting some items into here. There we go. So now this has got some space to receive more power. What we can do is we can place down our flux point. We can open this up. We can click the little empty box at the top here and we can select Isaac's power. And so now this is full up again because now it's receiving power from that flux plug. The power is being wirelessly transferred from here all the way around and over into our normal crafter. Now, normally these change color to match the color that you set your network to. I'm not quite sure if that's something they don't do in 1.19 or if that's just a visual glitch, but uh, either way, this is now working and this even works cross dimensionally. So now we can take this crafter here in here, we can place down our crafter, like so. We can place in all of our nether star essence. That's gonna be crafted instantly into nether stars. And again, if we were to place down our flux point, like so, that's gonna instantly refill this with redstone flux. And so now all we need to do is we need to craft a bunch of ultra popping body pots. We need to bring those over into this compact machine. And for every eight ultra hopping botany pots we have, we just need one crafter that we're gonna send all of the essences from those eight botany pots to, and then we can process all of those essences into their final product, which we can then import via an ender chest. So do we have what it takes to get a couple more of these botany pots? I think the answer is yes. Let's grab our seeds here. We can take these out. We can take silicon, we can take redstone, we can take Wither Skeleton. I don't think we're going to need. I'm going to put that away for now. Uh, we'll take Nether Star. We'll take Silver. That's four. Let's see if we can't get four more seeds. So Inferium seeds are definitely high on the list. Inferium seeds are a bit of a different kettle of fish, though, because that one might require its own crafter. Because with the Inferium seed, we want to craft it up uh, through all of the tiers, basically to Insanium. And then we can use the refined storage system to kind of downcraft it from Insanium to whatever we need it. So uh, let's put Inferium Seeds, I'll, I'll bookmark Inferium Seeds because those do need crafting and setting up, but they're on the back burner. Let's get uh, Copper Seeds, let's get Tin Seeds, let's get Coal Seeds, and we'll do like Iron Seeds as well. Let's get these four seeds, that's gonna take us up to eight, and then we can use our, uh, actually, never mind. we can take Iron Seeds off 
because the nether star essence requires two slots. And so for our first crafter, we're only going to need seven seeds, but let's get tin, copper, and coal going, and that's going to allow us to tear down uh, this setup right here. All right, so we've made the coal seed, the copper seed, and the tin seed, and I've also upgraded all of the elite hopping botany pots that we had here to ultra and crafted a few extra. So we now have seven ultra hopping botany pots. So if we were to head on through into our compact machine here, we can then grab, uh, ooh, our wireless crafting grid is out of range. That is unfortunate. I forgot that we don't yet have the uh, the interdimensional upgrade for that. That's fine. Let's grab some cobblestone. Uh, we've got our item pipe. Let's grab a couple of pipe upgrades. We'll go with seven of these. And then let's also get ourselves two ender chests as well. And then that actually completes a quest line for us. Fantastic. Uh, we'll take some blue die and we'll take some diamonds so we can lock those ender chests to us. So what we'll probably end up doing here is placing one of our ender chests down, let's say right about there. That's fine, actually. Uh, I was trying to put it one higher, but that's okay. And then we'll make this uh, white, blue, white like that. And if you put a diamond on the little nose right at the front of an ender chest, that locks that uh, ender chest to you. So now, even if somebody else on the server used the frequency white, blue, white, they wouldn't have access to this ender chest because this ender chest is, uh, is only for me. So uh, we're gonna do the same frequency over in here. But first of all, we're gonna put down our seven botany pots. So we're gonna start right up at the top of the room here. So let's do, this room is actually quite tall but we might end up with a lot of botany pots in here, but let's do something like one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, like that. So those are nice and central. And then we can go ahead and put all of our seeds in. Of course, in an ideal world, we would have Insanium Farmland on all of these, but we don't currently live in an ideal world, unfortunately. And I'm pretty sure that we can't pick up the dirt over here. Like we can't pick up this Imperium Farmland. I think if you try and pick it up, without using silk touch that it will just destroy the block like you just get dirt back yeah which is less than ideal you do get the essence back actually which i guess makes it kind of fine and so uh, we could if we wanted to look at making uh, some higher tier farmlands and in fact you know we might as well do that let's quickly grab the uh, wireless crafting grid which you will notice is still not being wirelessly crafted uh, the reason for that is actually fixable let me get rid of this uh, tinker's workbench it was useful while we had it but if we take a quick second to go back to Flux Networks, this guy right here, the Flux Controller, enables wireless charging on your Flux Network. Uh, now, it does look like we have basically everything it takes to make it, so I'll click Start on all those. It's five Flux Blocks, one Flux Core, and two Flux Dust. That is gonna take a second, especially with uh, the Pulverizer not being the fastest machine in the world, but as soon as all of that is done, we can craft the Flux Controller, and it doesn't really matter where you put this so again for now we can kind of just hide it around back here if we open this up we want to make sure it's connected to our network then from there we can go to wireless charging we can click on the areas where we want wireless charging to be enabled uh, you can't enable it in your main inventory but you can enable it in your curio slots that is uh, these slots right here and that is where we keep our wireless crafting grid and so if we go to wireless cra uh, wireless charging we can select basically everything that's not the main inventory. Make sure you toggle the enable wireless button and then click apply. Once that's applied, what that's now going to do is it's going to take power from our flux plug, the one that's down over next to our dynamo, and it's gonna transfer that wirelessly into our inventory, into any item that is chargeable in our inventory. In our case, that's the wireless crafting grid. And so now going forward, we should never again have to manually charge that using the uh, Tinker's station. We can just have it charged wirelessly for us, which is fantastic. So let's see if we can't get some farmland. Uh, in terms of essence, we do have quite a bit of it, but I think for the time being, the, um, the Inferium farmland is probably gonna be more than good enough especially given that our botany pots are, are just so fast. So we'll get seven more of these. Of course, some seeds do require specific tiers of farmland, much like the nether star seed. And so in those situations, we are gonna have to use whatever specific essence is required. But for everything else, I think just the basic inferior farmland is going to get the job done. Okay, so never mind. It looks like you can't really use the inferior farmland with a lot of these seeds. 
So I've put the uh, the tertium back in for the redstone and the silicon, but the silver, for example, here needs uh, at the very least, again, tertium. I would have thought that the coal would work with um, inferium, but no, it looks like it also requires at least prudentium. So uh, I guess let's take all of this imperium farmland out and uh, let's go swap that out for a higher tier of farmland. So uh, we'll drop all these down. Like this, chat does make a good point, and we can just pick these up because I'll get us the uh, the essence back. Chat makes a good point that it looks like the uh, the seed requires uh, the farmland that associates with the essence that you use to craft it. So for the coal seeds, we use prudentium. Uh, for everything else, we used tertium, and so uh, we are going to have to get a, a higher tier essence for that. It's not going to be a problem because we do have this insanium here that we can downcraft into uh, into quite a lot actually of uh, of tertium. And so for the time being, we might as well just make all of our farmland. Tertium farmland. Because apart from the uh, nether star essence, everything else can run on, on tertium. All right. So all of these are doing their thing, which is fantastic. They're all growing nicely. And so what we're going to do is we're going to extract from all of these down and around into our crafter. Now, there are going to be a few hitches here because the botany pots don't exclusively produce essence right they also produce extra seeds that we're going to have to get rid of and they also produce the um the fertilizer as well which is also something that we're going to have to get rid of but that should be fine so here we're going to set this uh, like this and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that we get one of each essence into the crafter and then we can use this button right here remember the current items in the internal and external buffers and that's going to allow us to basically designate certain slots inside the crafter to certain essences to make sure that there's always space for whatever essence needs to come in and we don't end up for example filling this up with you know silicon essence uh, leaving no space for something like nether star essence which could potentially be the case so let's set all of these to extract like so and let's also go ahead and put our ultra pipes in here very much so overkill at the moment but uh, fine nonetheless and then this kind of looks fine to me. Let me uh, quickly go back though. We do want to make sure that nothing goes in there that shouldn't go in there. For example, we don't want any of the extra seeds or any of the uh, fertilizer making its way in there. I don't know if it's going to go in there. I assume it would though. So what we probably want to do is that we can turn this off for now. We can say uh, on to activate. And then let's make sure that there is a slot for every essence so that should be one two three four five six seven that's almost correct uh, the only thing left to do is to get a slot for the nether star shards okay so these are the eight items that we actually want to have a slot and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to fill the rest here with cobblestone like this and i'm going to click remember items so now if i take the cobblestone out you'll see that all of these slots here are reserved for cobblestone and these slots are reserved for their specific essences that's perfect because it now means there's no space for anything else to make its way in here none of the extra seeds none of the the fertilizer no extra silicon essence or anything like that can make its way in everything has a place and so we can go ahead and turn this back on we can set it to uh, ignored that's going to start crafting again and the final step of the process is, of course, to extract from that crafter and insert into an ender chest, making sure that we set the ender chest to white, blue, white, and making sure again that we put that diamond on at the front. So now, if we set this to extract, and if we were to quickly do a slash home and grab another one of the netherite pipe upgrades, we could then do a slash back place that upgrade in like so and now all of the resources that we produce are going to get sent down into that ender chest and going forward this should kind of just work of course there are a few things here that we need to do we need to teach it how to use the copper essence apply we need to teach it how to use the tin essence apply and finally we need to teach it how to craft the coal essence as well apply the problem that I've done, I've made here is that there were items in the output buffer when I clicked remember, I see. So let's change that to on again. Let's put the cobblestone, well, let's click, let's put the cobblestone back in. Let's click this button here to forget the layout and then let's click remember again. That should work. I, I made the mistake of having items in the output buffer, which made it so that certain items like copper, coal and tin couldn't actually go into the output buffer. So you wanna make sure that's empty when you do the remembering. So now, if I go ahead and set that back to ignored, it's going to instantly craft all of those down, and uh, we're going to have basically no essence left, but we're going to have a ton of silicon, redstone, copper, tin, silver, uh, nether stars, and coal, which is super 
nifty. Um, and so this is basically the idea that we're going to use, I think, going forward. We can set up the exact same system, of course, uh, beneath this. So if we wanted to, we could get another tier three crafter. We could place that tier three crafter right about here. We could have another item pipe extracting up like that. And then, of course, we could have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like this, we could have seven body pots uh, beneath that. And then we could extract those up and around and it would be the exact same on this side as well. And then, of course, we could do that as many times as we want, right? We could have, you know, one, we could have 13 of these all going across like this. And so we've got space for a ton of seeds here. Of course, chat is correct. The one thing that we are currently not doing that we do need to do if we actually want the system to work is we need to power the crafter. So let's go ahead and put down a flux point onto that. That's going to start sending power over to the crafter. And the final piece of the puzzle is to make sure that we claim and then chunk load this compact machine to make sure that the compact machine continues to be loaded and everything in here continues to happen even when we're not actually inside of this compact machine. And so now, if we go out to the real world, the final stage of the process here is to make an importer for that ender chest and then to make sure that we have a draw for every item here, which I think we might do. We've definitely got one for copper, tin, coal, silver, and redstone. The only ones we might not have draws for currently are silicon and nether stars, but we can make that happen. We'll do silicon. We're actually running out of space here, but we can maybe do, uh, you know, silicon and nether stars like that. And so uh, if we were to get an importer, which does link us back to the beginning of the stream, because the first thing that I was going to do today that we have yet to do is to get our importers and exporters down to replace the simple storage network importers and exporters that we currently have all over the place. So uh, let's drop those in like that. Let's request an importer. Once we have that, we can then place that, of course, onto our ender chest. And it's going to start to slowly but surely pull these items in. We probably do want to look at making some upgrades for this importer because right now I think it's going to be too slow. The first one we can make is the stack upgrade. This is made with five sugar and four speed upgrades. The speed upgrades are made with quartz enriched iron, sugar, and the upgrade base. And I think this is one of those situations where once again, I'm just gonna teach my system how to do this. How have we managed to burn through all of our patterns we have? Let's go ahead and request another half stack of those. And as they come in, we can continue to encode these recipes like so, we'll encode that. I need one more pattern here. And once I have that one last pattern, we can then teach the system how to make the stack upgrade as well. Drop those in like so. Sugar can, I think we actually have none of. Is there something here? That is fantastic. I was going to say, I thought we did have sugar cane somewhere on the island. Let's go ahead and move that for now, just like right about here. Although we do want to make sure we get draws for all of these as well, so we can actually use this stuff going forward. But uh, there's the sugar cane. Can we get a stack upgrade? Start and start. That might take a second. There's a fair bit of uh, induction smelting involved in getting that. But essentially, as the name suggests, that's going to change the way the importer works. By default, it imports one item at a time. Putting a stack upgrade in changes it so that it starts importing a stack of items at a time. And then you can take it even further by adding speed upgrades on top of the stack upgrades to allow it to start pulling stacks very, very quickly, which is going to be ideal for us. Now, um, one thing you can do here, by the way, is we can make a, a crafting monitor, I believe it's called, this one right here. The crafting monitor is going to be a screen that lets us see what current crafting recipes we are uh, we're waiting for. So real quick, let's get some sand requested, and then let's do this and request all of the stuff be made so that we can actually make the uh, crafting monitor. This is super useful. The crafting monitor allows us to see what crafts we're currently waiting to complete. So I think what we'll do is we'll move the lapis straw over to the end here because we have a, an empty draw that's not doing anything. So we'll put that like that. Uh, we'll put this in the system for now. We can always get that back out in the future. And then the crafting monitor can go down right about here. And now if we open this up, we'll see any pending crafts. Currently, we don't have any pending crafts, but we can kind of get an idea of what it is that's holding up a given craft. Um, so if I were to request, for example, another stack upgrade here, which we currently can't because we're missing iron of all things, that is worrisome. We have zero iron left, which is less than ideal. We need to get an iron seed down ASAP. 
But uh, we have the stack upgrade now, and so we can go and put that, of course, into our importer. And so if we were to replace this cable right here with an importer, that's going to start importing the items into the system. And then if we were to put a stack upgrade in there, it's going to start importing those items faster. You'll see that before we were importing them about as fast as they were coming in, which is not ideal, whereas now we're actually importing fast enough to extract them faster than they're being made. Nice. We should have, I think, yeah, some raw iron ready to go. We do indeed. So we can get more iron, but again, much like with our other resources chat, I think it's going to be in our best interest to just get an iron seed and then look at growing the iron over in our compact machine with potentially another tier three crafter. In fact, what I might go ahead and do here is uh, take a quick look. We can unbookmark most of what's over here. Uh, if we look at the organic matter, we have the poor organic matter that produces coal, copper, and tin. We are growing all of those. That's fine. Uh, next up is the improved organic matter. That produces iron, aluminum, and nickel. And so I'll bookmark those three because I think we'll look at getting iron seeds, aluminum seeds, and nickel seeds. And at that point, we can just get rid of our improved organic matter sifting system. Next up after the improved organic matter, I believe is the colorful organic matter. This one is where things, uh, oh, that's not correct. Next up is the skulking organic matter. This one is intriguing because it produces echo shards. Actually, never mind. I thought we might need the echo shards to get the next tier of, of stuff, but I don't think we do, right? The echo shard is just needed because we need echo nuggets, but the echo nuggets are only used to make skulking transformation powder. And the skulking transformation powder is only used to make the skulking organic matter, which again is used to make more echo shards. So I don't think we need that. I think we can bookmark gold and silver and we can get gold and silver ingots, uh, gold and silver seeds going as well. Obviously, silver seeds not required. We already have those uh, ready to go. Enderman seeds, we can get those as well. They're going to be a little trickier because they do require the soul jars. However, we have the soul extractor and we have a bunch of ender pearls already. So we should be able uh, to do those in the same way that we did the wither skeleton seeds. Thankfully, unlike the skulking organic matter, which requires the previous tier transformation powder to make it, uh, the colorful transformation powder doesn't require the skulking transformation powder. So we don't need those echo shards. Now we could then start looking at the products that we get from the next tier here, from the colorful organic matter. Redstone dust were already growing with the redstone seeds. And then uh, emeralds, I assume we can grow. Lapis, we can grow. Diamonds, we can grow. Fluorite, we can grow. Prismarine, we can grow, and we can actually use that prismarine essence to make both prismarine crystals and prismarine shards. And so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seeds there. So that's more than eight, which makes me think that we could then look at the nether organic matter. So this one, prosperity shards, you can't grow. However, I don't really think we need a ton of these, and we probably have a lot already. Uh, gold we're already getting. Mushrooms and mushrooms we don't need to grow, right? Nether quartz you can grow. There's another quartz seed. Let's bookmark that. Netherite, I believe we can also grow. Yeah, there's a netherite essence that it makes just netherite ingots directly. So we can also get netherite seeds as well. Glowstone has a seed. Soldus doesn't have a seed, but I don't know if we're going to need a ton of it. Going forward, it's not used to make a ton of stuff. Like, I don't think we're going to need loads of it to finish the pack. And so I think these 13 seeds here are going to allow us to get rid of basically all of our organic matter production. Like, this entire setup here, I think, can be taken down if we just craft these 13 seeds. Okay, so I've made most of the seeds here, at least all of the lower tier seeds. The only ones I've not made are the Enderman seeds, because we need to use the... Uh, soul extractor. And I've not made the emerald, diamonds, and netherite seeds because these all require supremium essence, and we just don't have the essence. I've used our insanium essence to make imperium essence, and uh, we just don't have enough supremium to make these seeds. And so this is where I want to come back to what I mentioned earlier, and that is the inferium seed. So what I am going to do is I'm going to request another tier three crafter, start and start. And what we're going to do is we're going to use one crafter to automatically craft our Inferium all the way up to Insanium. Because now that we have the Master Infusion Crystal, automating that should be pretty straightforward. 
So the idea here, much like we saw before, uh, is that we want to take our Inferium and we want to upcraft that. So we'll go to slot one and we'll say, let's teach you to do this craft here. Now, in this scenario, we basically want all of the essences to go into the input slot, right? So apply, I wanna make sure that that there is a master infusion crystal and apply. We'll then go to step two and we will teach it how to use the Prudentium essence to make the Tertium like this. Again, make sure it's a master infusion crystal, make sure it's set to input, apply. And then we're gonna do that all the way up the chain going from Tertium to Imperium, from Imperium to Supremium, and from Supremium to Insanium. So now, as soon as we give this power, which of course we can do with a flux point, we'll request one of those. We're missing a block of redstone and an ender pearl. We're out of redstone? No, we're not out of redstone. Okay, so slight problem here is that I moved this drawer that was holding lapis. And so now there's nothing connecting this left-hand side of the storage drawer network to the system. So the drawer controller is here, but there's no connection across the, uh, across the way. That is fine. That is where we can use uh, the trim that we saw earlier to kind of bridge the gap here. Let me uh, quickly get some trim. Here we can take the spruce trim and uh, we can somewhat awkwardly do this to connect the left side to the right side or the right side to the left side. So now the system does have access to those redstone blocks again. And so we should be able to request the flux points, start and start. And as soon as we get power to this guy, we should just be able to start pumping the inferior essence in and it should get started uh, and it should automatically just start downcrafting that Inferium through to Tertium, Imperium, Supremium, and into Insanium. We can now see in the uh, crafting monitor what's holding us back. So you'll see that we are uh, currently waiting on Flux Dust by the looks of it. And yeah, you'll see that the pulverizer there is what is holding us back. And then once that's done, the whole craft is done. So it's a nifty little thing to have to see what it is that's holding you back. Once we have the Flux Point, boom and boom. So that's us. This is going to get going and should in theory, oh, of course, as soon as we put the master infusion crystal in, get to work. Now, I might have done this incorrectly because I think this might put, oh no, this is fine. And look at that, it is doing its job. And so that very quickly produced all the resources there. I did do one thing wrong, and that's that we want the Insanium, I think, to go to the output slot. So we'll click apply on that and make sure the Insanium goes out here. The idea being that what we're going to do is we're going to grow a ton of Inferium using the Inferium seed and using an Ultra Botany pod. And we're going to send all of that Inferium into this crafter. That's going to produce, that's basically going to turn all of our Inferium into Insanium. Once we have that done, we can just have a draw somewhere with all of our Insanium in it. And then we can teach our system how to downcraft that Insanium to lower tiers of essence. Because once you have the Insanium, you can just teach the system how to craft it into, into Supremium in code. And then we can teach it how to craft the Supremium down into Imperium in code, the Imperium down into Tertium in code, the Tertium down into Prudentium in code, and the Prudentium back down into Inferium in code. And so, Going forward, if we ever need any of the essences that are not Insanium, which we might if we want to make, for example, Diamond Seeds, Emerald Seeds, and Netherite Seeds, we could just request that our system uh, get us uh, 12 Supremium, and it will take whatever Insanium we have and downcraft it back, which is fantastic. So um, currently, we don't actually have a Hopping Botany Pot uh, for the um, Inferium Seed. I will request one of those, and uh, we will look at making that Inferium Seed as well which is actually super easy. And uh, we can get that set up in the, uh, in the compact machine. But what I think I'm probably gonna do temporarily is steal this crafter and just place it up above the, um, the advanced item collector here. That's going to allow us to, uh, to very quickly, hopefully get all of the essence required to make these remaining seeds here. Once we have all of those seeds, then we'll go and we'll put the uh, crafter inside of the compact machine with an ultra botany pot to allow it to kind of passively make uh, a ton of inferium for us to use at some point in the future. So we have run into a slight problem here, and that is that uh, with our insanium essence, there are three options that you can go for. There is 
The default option, results of the crafting operation will go to the output buffer. There's the second option, results of the crafting operation will stay in the input buffer. But what we need for the insanity essence is the third option, results of the crafting operation will go to the output buffer, but remaining items like buckets will stay in the input buffer. We need to hit apply on EXTC. That's going to make sure that the master infusion crystal doesn't get moved to the output buffer whenever it makes some insanium. Also, you can click this button down here to change it to fast mode, and it's just going to make it super fast, which is fantastic. Get rid of that snail, get to the rocket. It's going to make things very quickly. We need just one more insanium, and uh, we're going to be good to go. And uh, people did point out in the YouTube comments that uh, if you hold your alter mine key, you can actually right click and harvest all of these at the same time without having to craft the site. All right, so a little while later, we've got down two more crafters. I've decided to just put them in front uh, of, in a line of the previous crafters so that we can uh, share the flux points. So this one here is sharing the flux point of the last one. We've got down all of the ultra hopping botany pots. They've all got their correct tier of farmland. They're all going around into their crafters and they all have been set up to craft their specific essence into their specific item. And so I think that we pretty much should be good to go here. I think all I need to do is set all of these to extract and then run these pipes down around over to that ender chest. So extract, extract. Let's get our ultimate pipe upgrades here and here. And then let's just go ahead. And uh, if we have a bit more in the way of cobblestone, in hindsight, I shouldn't have built these so high up, but uh, let's do this and this. And yeah, that should start extracting all of the finished products around into here. Of course, now we run into the problem that we ran into earlier in that we need to make sure that every one of the resources that we're pulling in has a place to go, which it looks like they do. This is good. Um, and we also need to make sure that uh, they have void upgrades on them, which reminds me, I think the next and maybe last seed of the day that we should make is uh, obsidian seeds. Obsidian seeds are going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier because they mean that we can just kind of give up on using this as automation and we don't have to rely on our infinite source of lava. Instead, we can just take four obsidian, we can take one prosperity seed base, and we can take four tertium essence. Uh, Twitch chat did point out a rather helpful tip earlier, and that is that uh, if you just look at the seed in JEI, it tells you the tier, tier one, uh, being Inferium, Tier 2 being Prudentium, Tier 3 being Inferium, Tier 4 being Imperium, and then Tier 5 being Supremium, and I guess Tier 6 is also Insanium, but uh, it's just an easier way of seeing without having to look at the actual recipe. And so uh, do I also have what it takes to get one more Ultra Botany Pot? We totally do, nice. Uh, while we wait for that to craft up, we'll also, as I mentioned earlier, move the uh, crafter over there into the compact machine as well with this Ultra Botany Pot and the Inferium Seed, and we'll get that set up to start making the Insanium Essence as well, and then we'll get a drawdown for Insanium Essence on the wall there, so we can start having that brought back, and then obviously our system knows how to craft everything else, that's gonna be fine. Is that Ultra Pot ready to go? It is indeed fantastic. Back in here, let us nerd pull back up. We'll put the Obsidian Pot right about there. Uh, I do need to make sure I go back and get some farmland for it, but that's fine. I think we have some tertium farmland lying around. We totally do. Fantastic. Boom. All right. Apply. So that should work as well. There it is. Fantastic. So the obsidian is now also being made. I did the quick thing where I forgot everything and then re-remembered it as well to allow the obsidian essence to make its way in there. But I think that this is almost good to go. The only thing standing in our way now is the, um, the extra resources that we don't want. So um, things like the seeds and the fertilized essence. If we do a quick slash home, I'm being told by the Twitch chat that we should be able to use a trash can for this. So the trash cans are easy to make and it looks like they have the ability to be filtered. So in here, there is a filter that we can set to whitelist. And I just wanna check something here before we actually uh, pull the trigger on this. If I were to do this, set this to extract and put in an ultimate pipe upgrade like that. This right now, will that take anything I put in here? It won't, interesting. So if I were to add enderman seeds to the whitelist, if I put gold seeds in there, they don't go in, but if I put enderman seeds in, they get deleted. That is fantastic. So we're gonna need a few trash cans because we have quite a lot of seeds uh, available to us, but that is completely fine. And so I think the uh, solution here is to take these trash cans so we just want to take these trash cans and I guess put one down at the end of each line, right? 
So we can take this and, uh, and we can put it down over at the end here. We'll set it to whitelist. And then we will, uh, we'll need to take the seeds, which I think I probably just deleted all of them because they probably got deleted very quickly, but they'll come back fairly shortly here. Let's do the same thing. Uh, if we don't die from fall damage, let's uh, do the same thing over here. We'll put one down like this, make sure it's set to whitelist, put one down here like this, make sure it's set to whitelist. And then we're just gonna whitelist the seven seeds and the fertilizer on each one of those. And that should allow us to, uh, to go through and just delete any excess seeds, any excess fertilizer that's produced. That should mean that these never back up. So this internal inventory here never backs up. So the essences are always produced, always sent around to the crafters and always crafted into their final form. And of course, then sent back around into the overworld. Real quick, I am gonna make sure we get a, a draw for obsidian. We can put the obsidian maybe here for now. And, uh, and that should hopefully hold on to that. And yeah, I think once we get a decent amount of obsidian, we could then look at just getting a bunch of void upgrades. This is one of those things I feel like we should just teach our system how to make these, uh, especially the upgrade bases. That seems like a sensible thing to teach our system how to make. Uh, let me get a bunch of planks. Let's teach the system how to make, I think it already knows how to make chests. It does. Let's teach it how to make the regular storage drawer, that being this one. And then we'll teach it how to make the upgrade template, but using the uh, regular spruce drawer in the middle there, we'll encode that as well. And then finally, we can teach it how to make the void upgrade like that, drop all three of those into here. And yeah, now we should be able to request those void upgrades really whenever we like. Can I get uh, maybe 20 of those? I can't, I don't have an obsidian, but if I want 10, I can make 10. And that they should come in very quick, yeah, because they're just super easy to make. And uh, we can start putting those on basically everything. This one already has one, this one needs one. And this, finally chat, links back around right to the beginning of the stream, because right at the beginning of the stream, the thing that we were needing to do was to fix our importers, because right now, this flint and this, these pebbles here are overflowing. And uh, now that we have a void upgrade on this drawer, we can actually put an importer on there. So can I request let's say like 10 importers, I can. Can I request, let's say, maybe 10 exporters? We definitely don't need 10 exporters, but I see no reason not to request it given that we have the resources to do so. And uh, in here we can see that those are being crafted. We can see what is waiting for what. And if we come over here, we can make sure that uh, we accelerate these using our trusty time in a bottle to make things nice and fast. The trouble with accelerating this is that sometimes the importer can't keep up here, so the importer's not importing fast enough uh, to make that happen. That's not the end of the world. That's where we could uh, look at getting some speed upgrades. Uh, if we were to get a couple of speed upgrades here, which again, we'll request, that's gonna take a minute because everything else is currently backlogged. But if we put speed upgrades into here, that would start pulling them out faster. It might also be worth getting another stack upgrade as well. So we pull things like this quartz enriched iron out much faster than it's currently being pulled. I don't know if I can accelerate this. Oh, I totally can, look at that. I don't know if that's actually any faster or not. I think it might be, but uh, the stack upgrade and the speed upgrades are definitely even faster than just the time in a bottle. And now that we have the exporters and importers, it's basically a case of, uh, of going around and we can take the speed upgrades as well here actually. Uh, it's basically a case of going around and these go in over here, but uh, going around and, and actually putting these down. So we're gonna put uh, importers down where they need to go. But then again, at the same time chat, we've kind of, um, we've kind of, gotten rid of the need for much of what's here, right? Um, so this line can be taken down. We don't need this. This line can be taken down. This line can be taken down. This line can be taken down. And I think the last line can also be taken down, right? We, uh, we crafted everything. We got the seeds for everything that we need. All of the first five tiers of organic matter are now no longer needed because we have, uh, we've taught our system how to grow them all and how to craft all of the required resources from that. So we can tear most of this down, which I'll probably go ahead and do between streams. And then next time we can come back and we can look at actually starting on the end because that starts with ender matter and uh, the ender organic matter I think does require the, uh, the previous tier. Yeah, we need the nether organic fluid, which we are already making. We can repurpose that uh, for making ender matter and we can kind of just tear down a lot of what's here. There are a few things that do actually need imports and exports. Um, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think we need this. Like, I don't think we need the flint and the pebbles going forward. But um, we can stick an import one down uh, like this and make sure that's there. Should we need it in the future? Um, I don't know <laughs> of where we actually have any other importers, uh, importers or exporters. We got an exporter there 
But again, I don't know if we actually need this chat. So I think even though we've just made 10 importers and exporters, basically between streams, I think we can go ahead and tear down a lot of what is here. We don't need the portal. This can go. We don't need the first. All of this can go. The uh, farmland over here, that can go. The little uh, advanced item collector, that can go. And uh, yeah, next time we can come back and we can look at, uh, at what we're going to keep. I don't think some of this stuff needs to stay, honestly, uh, because for the ender organic matter, we need to turn nether organic matter into ender organic fluid. Once we have that, uh, we do need a constant supply of it. And so, yeah, we're going to have to go through the standard chain of, of transmutation here, but that's kind of fine. Again, we can repurpose most of what we already have. And then the ender transformation powder isn't too difficult. You sift crushed endstone. Endstone, initially, we get from endstone pebbles, which we get by infusing uh, regular stone pebbles with resonant ender, which you can make with ender pearls and uh, dimensional shards. But once we have uh, four endstone, we can, of course, you guessed it, make endstone seeds, and then we can use that to actually get... To, oh, no, maybe not, actually. Uh, we need endstone, chorus root, and purple blocks. And, uh, yeah, this should be fine, actually. Uh, the purple blocks are made from pop chorus root. So we are going to have to get a bit of endstone using the pebble method, but once we have sifted enough of the um, end powder, we should then be able to get the uh, endstone seeds, at which point we can just grow the endstone, crush it automatically, make the powder, and then sift it. And of course, much like we've been doing up until now, once we have enough lead, uranium, and platinum, we can then just grow uh, those resources. And then if we really wanted to, uh, things like chorus root can also be grown with end essence and nature essence. And then from there, I think we're kind of good to go. That gets us into mechanism. Uh, we can then look at this kind of add-on here for mystical agriculture. We could potentially look at getting more power with reactors should we need it. And then we can start working down into the final quest line, which I don't really think has too many more matters. I think there's this one final matter here with the creative organic matter, which, um, again, I don't think requires the previous matters. We do have to go through cognizant matter by the looks of it to get these creative organic spores, but that should be fine, chat. So I don't think we need a lot of what is here. We can kind of uh, tear this down, rearrange it, make it look a little bit nicer, a little bit less cluttered uh, for our future use. But we are getting slowly but surely towards the end of the pack. We now have wireless power. We now have infinite resources coming in. And uh, I guess actually the last thing that I did not do, chat, that I'm going to do real quick is uh, is actually get that um, get our uh, essence coming in because that would be a foolish mistake. Let me do this. We'll put the new crafter. And by the new crafter, I mean the old crafter, like that. And then we'll get down our... People are saying, people were saying that we might only be able to extract from the bottom of a botany pot. I don't know if that's true, but we're about to find out. If I do this, can we grow our Inferium seed in there? That is the question. We might as well make a fairly high-tiered farmland, given that we only need the one farmland. Boom, boom, and we'll give that a quick acceleration, and we'll see if that actually extracts. It looks like it doesn't extract. It doesn't. Okay, that's fine. It's going to look janky, but you know what? We can do something like this. We can do this, and if we want it to be symmetrical, we could do that. And if we want it to look nicer, we could do that, and then set it to extract, put that in like so. And, uh, and there we go. We've automated the production of Insanium. Did I set this to extract? I didn't. Let's do this and this. And then uh, we also do need to draw for Insanium when that finally comes in. But that is good to go. And uh, people in the Twitch chat are reminding me of one final thing that I did try and do earlier. And that is uh, put down an exporter onto the pattern grid. That's over here somewhere. Let me get rid of... Uh, actually, yeah, okay, real quick. <laughs> Let me get rid of the um, the trim here. That trim does need to be there. But uh, let's get rid of that. Let's put an exporter on... Oh, I've put this in such an awkward place. Okay, let's take this. Let's move you. We're going to put an exporter on the pattern grid like that. We're then going to put the importer that we just had back down on the ender chest like that. We can then reconnect that all up like this. And then I think we can, at this point, safely get rid of this cable. Because I think we can finally say goodbye to the simple storage network. I think it's no longer required, so we should be able to get rid of this guy. And, of course, the cable underneath it, that being this one here and this one here. 
we can put the external storage down like that and then just use some regular cable to run that up to our controller. And so now we no longer have that uh, horrible cable running around the, uh, the front here, which is fantastic. Our exporter is ready to go. Uh, the trim we can put, I think, just under the floor here. Like so, that's gonna make it look a little nicer on the other side. Let me request another flux point for that new crafter that we have. We'll go start and start. And then if we take one of our patterns out of here, we can put that pattern into this exporter like so. And now that's going to automatically export any new patterns we craft into the pattern grid. So again, if I requested like a stack of these and start, that's going to start slowly making those. And as they're made, they'll be placed into here. So they're auto refilled and uh, we just don't really have to worry about it. Is that flux point ready to go it's not as per usual the slow point is our pulverizer thankfully we're very close and i think probably at the point now where we can start making enderium um, and once we have enderium we can actually start making these uh, resonant integral components that are going to allow us to speed up all of our machines not just a select few that though is a problem for future isaac let's grab the flux point let's finally head back into this compact machine and then let's put this down right about there make sure that's set to our network and boom that should be good to go that should uh, that should start producing more insanium essence for us and yeah next time we'll come back we'll start working through the uh end quest line i think we should be able to work our way through quite a few of these uh, quite quickly and uh, and then finally of course we'll set our sights on the real end and uh, and see if we can't wrap things up but for now i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of seopolis there